Hey guys, welcome to another live show. What car or truck should I buy? What car or truck should you buy, Andre? <laughs> yes, this is a live show that we do every Monday at obviously this right now. And um, we answer your questions. So in the chat room, uh, put down your questions, your feedback, your comments. And of course, we also answer email questions that we got before the show. And of course, you can keep them coming as well. And today we're featuring this. Yeah, we are. So this is the 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro in army green. Yes, um, this is a very popular color. And this is a vehicle, you know, that we're testing this week from Toyota mm -hmm. here in Colorado. And this is, a, this is still a pretty exciting vehicle, even though it's an old design. It is an old design, but it's a very relevant design because in an age of fancy computers and fancy electric motors, this is kind of a cool retro truck. Four liter V6, five speed automatic transmission, but it's tried and it's true. Let me open the hood so we can look at this beast. Um, and it does have a hood scoop that I don't think is functional, Tommy. No, I don't think it's functional at all. But um, that's what Toyota does. They like hood scoops for kind of the aesthetic look. And look at this, the four liter. The four liter V6. Andre, do you know the power numbers on this? No, I do not. But you know what I do know? <laughs> what? You know what I do know? My friend just recently bought a TRD Pro 4Runner. Okay. And he could have bought anything. You know, he, he was fortunate enough to where he had the money to buy an SUV. And he loves it. And he, with a few mods that I'll tell you about in a second, uh, he uh, actually is very happy with this 4Runner. Even though everybody out there says, when are they going to redesign it? When are they going to redesign it, right? That's right. what they say. Right. Well, I think the power number on this is somewhere around 270 horsepower. Yes. Uh, that and, is correct. Yep, and right <laughs> around that same amount of torque. So not a super powerful engine. You know, it doesn't have any fancy hybridization. No. But it's old school. No turbos. No big V6. Yeah. Uh, no diesel option either. No. No diesel option. Made it through an old school four-wheel drive system with two high, four high, neutral, and four-wheel drive low. Yeah, and so, obviously, well, that's all we can say about this engine. The Tacoma, obviously, is not using this engine, although it used to, right? Right, so they used to have the same exact power plant. The new Tacoma has gone to the 3.5 um, Atkinson, Atkinson cycle. And cycle. Dual, in, dual injection, Not too. Atkins, Atkinson cycle yeah. engine, yep. Yeah. Uh, and that was for efficiency. Uh, but I've read that actually people have had better luck with these four liters. This is kind of a, a really old school A little design. bit more tried and true, right? right? I mean, and the five speed is tried and true, and the way they're made it together is tried and true. And if you want to go overlanding long distances or, you know, skiing in the mountains or what have you, this is maybe the way to go um, as far as kind of a two row SUV. Although you can't get a third row, right? Right. But not on a pro. No, so the pro is the off road trim, and I think it looks fantastic. I know this fifth generation 4Runner has been around for a number of years now, but I still think it's the best looking Toyota in their lineup. It's very aggressive. It's got that big bash plate in the front. Uh, and in army green, this is just a really great color. There's yeah. just one fly in the ointment, guys. Yes, what, what is that? And uh, Thomas Lopez was asking in the comments earlier, what's the price? Ooh, that's I actually a, have the Monroni right there. That's for a small fly in the ointment. Thirty-seven thousand dollars. What? Fully no. Loaded. What? What? No. Thirty-seven. <laughs> it's fifty-two thousand one hundred and forty-seven. So last year, it was closer to that, Tommy. It was closer to that forty-seven. But now, with their price hike for twenty twenty, okay. granted, you do get some more tech, and we'll get to that in a minute. Sure. It's over fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, but how much? How much is a fully loaded Wrangler uh, Rubicon? Yeah, like sixty grand nowadays. It's crazy. <laughs> and this truck is going to last you forever. I mean, this could be your forever vehicle if you wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, so, what are the differences with the TRD Pro? Well, I do love this new Toyota scripting along the front. Yep. I don't think we'll be able to see it, but down here, big TRD. Big, skip big plate. TRD skip plate, yep. Yeah, and uh, Zach alluded to this, but right here, there is also a radar mm -hmm. underneath this grill. So Toyota Safety Sense is available now. Is it standard uh, or is it available? Uh, it's standard. It's standard. It's sta range. Yeah, yeah it's standard. standard now. Yeah, standard. So you can see it here. So it's been updated with that. And when my friend bought uh, a Forerunner recently, the 2020, right. um, he also was able to find a lot of aftermarket support. So this, this bottom section, this front section, um, can be replaceable with a winch mount. That's so cool. Uh, so yeah, so you can actually upgrade this um, 4Runner if you want. 
and the uh, sky is the limit, right? You can, you can keep upgrading it. Absolutely, and there's just so much you can do with these trucks. Now, in terms of suspension, these are running a really unique set of shocks, right, Andre? Yeah, shocks and tires and wheels. So they're all, I think, very attractive, first yeah. of all, and the, the suspension is functional. Um, a, a tiny, tiny lift, so it's not that much higher than a regular forerunner, right? Right. But, but they're using, I don't know if you can see this, uh, it's really dark in there. But um, special shock tuning, TRD wheels, Nitto Terra Grappler tires. This is, I think, kind of the only downside to this truck are the tires. So Jeep is using KO2s or Falcon Wild Peaks, yes. depending on the trim, or even now Mud Terrains uh, from, I think, Toyo. I think they're using, oh, no, no, no they're Fire Falcons. Stones. Yeah, but they're also using Fire Stones. Okay. Um, these but guys are still using, you know, a, a Less very, aggressive tire. Yeah, yeah, and I was talking to Toyota why they do this. Yes. And there's actually a lot that goes into, uh, you know, what tire they can choose, you know, road noise, handling, stopping distances, but fuel economy is kind of the big deal. So Toyota tends to put a very mild tire on their vehicles right out of the bat, which I'm definitely a little bit bummed about. I'd love to see, you know, like a dirt track or something. Yeah, but I've asked Toyota engineers and marketing guys this question also about mm -hmm. the tires, yeah. and they always say that it's the most upgradable, changeable thing. Yeah, immediately. I well, think Zach has a question. I Zach? have a couple of comments from people, actually. And the one thing that's really missing from this 4Runner that it really needs can be summed up in three words. Front, locking, diff. It does have a rear locker. Yes. But it really needs a front to compete with the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. I thought you were going to say front wheel drive, and I was going to be very <laughs> confused oh. for a second. No, but so my friend w uh, sold his Wrangler and bought this. Okay. So my friend Wayne, I'm, I keep using him because I think it's a lot of good conversation. He, when he bought this, he said this had more rear space, does, rear yeah. second row space than the Wrangler. So you can kind of uh, get a sense for that in here. Because um, he also needed to put a child and a child seat back here, so he was happy about that. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can kind of show you show this to you. It's just a lot more usable as an everyday vehicle than the Wrangler. Of course, you can't take the top off, but on the highway, flip on this light. Yeah, let's turn the light on there. On the highway, I think it's going to be more comfortable than a Wrangler. For everyday use, it's probably going to be more comfortable than a Wrangler. Andre, do you want to show him the front seat while we're kind of in this vicinity? Yeah, but you also see the stitching, right? So if you show the seat. Yeah, so red stitching on the TRD Pros. Yeah. Now this interior is feeling very dated, but once again, very simple, easy to use. And they finally upgraded the infotainment system on this. So now you've got, you know, Apple CarPlay. Yes. And, and whoop, whoop. Yep, and it does beep. And it's telling me that the sunroof is open. Uh, Toyota, thank you for letting me know. The sunroof is indeed open. And they do have this kind of trim. You know, this kind of carbon fiber looking trim. That's kind of weird it, on the TRD Pro. I know. We, How come this trim doesn't match that trim? That's that a good question. That kind of bugs me a little that's bit. That's a good question, this trim. Yeah. But you'll notice, you know, some some ways uh, it's, it's aging. One USB port there. Yes. You know, in the center, you've got a power outlet and a brochure for Toyota Safety Sense. But it doesn't have a lot of the connectivity USB-C's that you'd find in a lot of his competition. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, Wi-Fi hotspot, you know, all those features. Sure. Um, it yeah. does have a higher output USB port, though, because for 2020, it actually does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's true, yeah. So yes. it's a little bit more power, but the old but one was like one, one amp, one amp think, or some like tiny that, yeah. number, yeah. Yes, but this SUV also has one feature that almost no other SUV does have. Oh, yeah? Do, do you know what that is? Uh, 14 well, MPG? No, there's a little <laughs> switch for it right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, yeah, the it rear is, window. It is not very efficient, but the switch here uh, operates the rear glass on the rear hatch. Let's, let's go check it out. For sure. Andre, before we do that, take a look up there. Um, so, also, oh, yes, crawl this. control and A track systems as well. It has a very sophisticated four wheel drive still. I mean, it's kind of old school, but also new school. Yeah, I love it. Just really to interrupt cool. for one second. Chase Young Green is asking, is the alternator upgraded on a TRD Pro? I don't believe it is. I don't think it is. Not from the regular one. There is also a comment from V Diver One and a few other people talking about how 90% um, of 4x4s never go off road and therefore don't need lockers. But here's the thing the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and the 4Runner TRD Pro are for the 10% of people who do take their 4Runners off road. Yes. If you don't need a locker, then go ahead and get an SR5. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah, or some other but, forerunner. You know, for yeah. those who actually take their vehicle and use it off-road, then this would actually be a good option. So speaking of SR5, actually, there's a new trim that just debuted this year at the Chicago International Auto Show. 
And that was the Toyota 4Runner Trail. Now the Trail is based on a base model SR5, but yeah. it has some interior goodies, some cooler wheels from the TRD Off-Road. Right. But it's also available in cool colors. So before, if you wanted the Army Green, you had to get a Pro. Now you can get a more affordable Trail model. In this yeah, car. and that is a 2021 model. You're talking about the Trail Edition. Right. And, and that's coming this summer, so August, September time frame, which also means this 4Runner generation is sticking around for some time longer. Um, and of course, the TRD Pro does Come with oh, roof rack, really so beefy. Cool. Yeah, I love this. I really, I, I really do like what they've done with this TRD Pro. So they change them every year a little bit. Yeah. And they typically it's like colors or roof boxes or wheels. So I'll be curious to see what they do for 21 on the pros. But here's the feature. I mean, I think it's it's a cool party trick, right? Ooh, and just very that. useful. That's so cool. So if you do have some groceries or camping gear, you know, you can kind of get it in and out, or you can obviously open the entire hatch right pretty easily not many vehicles offer this um, and of course it has this sliding tray so if you do have a heavy cooler like we saw in chicago right, right. you can actually pull it out and kind of get to it and this is a pretty neat feature i like this yeah it is a neat feature uh one of the cool things available in this upcoming trail is they actually have a cooler that they're including on the tray which is body matched to the outside of the vehicle so if you get a green uh Green four and you get a green cooler. <laughs> That's very cool. Power outlet too, Andre. Yeah, check it out, guys. Um, we do have a 400 watt inverter here and, and power outlet in the back. These yeah, that's activated by a switch in the front next to the steering wheel, by the way. I yeah. have an irrational love for the 4Runner. Like, I shouldn't like it as much as I do because it's just so ancient. But it's just so much fun to drive. It's so durable off-road. It really is a good truck. I mean, it still is relevant. And it, it is expensive, like, yeah, like I mentioned. 52 is a lot of money. 52 is a lot of money, but it, it's kind of competitive still when you consider some of the other SUVs. So do I just push the button? Yeah, and you have to hold it. I'm holding it, Andre. Do you have a key? I have a key. Do you have the key? Yeah. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. That's fast too, huh? Yeah, very neat. All right, Tommy, so some people are asking, how's the Mercedes ML? <laughs> um, <laughs> Our new project? It's good, so if you haven't seen the video, uh, we painted the bumpers on it. So uh, they're Rhino line, which is a little bit tougher. And that's on Classics, right? TFL Classics? I did, yes. Yeah. And I lost this little itty bitty grill part in the front. It's, I saw you taking it off. Yeah, it's about, can you hold this? Yeah. I can put it down. It's about this long, the grill. Yeah. It's made out of plastic. Guess how much it cost? Uh, for the ML, this is. First generation ML. First gen. Uh, I want to say, I want to say $100. Well, close, $70. But it was just a little thin piece of plastic that looks like it has no purpose. But I hate that I lost it, so I went out and bought a new one. $70 for that little piece. Where did you find it? eBay. eBay? But it's going in okay. for a new steering wheel, um, for the fuel gauge, and I might put a fuel pump in it because it's, it's, it's going to leave sketchy. me stranded. Yeah. Okay. So Sirenator was saying in the comments, Hey, Tommy, I have the original Mercedes MCS Navi head unit Ooh. and six-disc CD changer for your ML320. You can have it free, really. Wow, that's very nice of you. That's cool. Uh, send us an email, info at TFL car. We'll talk. I'm not sure how compatible it is because it's just such a base model car. And also, remember somebody on the forum or on our email, Elias, mm -hmm. info at tflcar.com, yep. was also mentioning like fuses. Did yeah. you check the fuses so and all that there's stuff? A, there's a fuse fix for the fuel gauge where you pop the fuse out of it. Uh, but the thing is, is most, the vast majority of the late model cars, pre-2000, and the fuse they're talking about is in a panel in the lower passenger footwell. And we just don't have that fuels panel at all. Like, it's not a thing in the early cars. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't been able to make that happen. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Sirenator is saying in the car, it does need a retrofit. Yeah, I see. I, so. I see, I got gotcha. you. All right, what other questions do we have? Should we go around the front, Andre? Yeah, yeah, and look at some prepared questions as well. Sure, absolutely. I also like these, so this is probably not going to stand up to a boulder, but it is plastic. I do like the textured material rather than just like a black, uh, you know, a black plastic thing. It's got a little bit of traction to it. So and we but, do have some ice falling off the bottom there, and that's just because we had a couple snowstorms well, actually yeah, last week. This is going we to make, make my dad furious, by the way. I know. <laughs> he's watching. He, he's probably watching this with the Camry guys at the Toyota event. Yeah, he's probably screaming and about the And he's probably ice. screaming at the, uh, at I the did phone. The he I did the best he could to clean it off, I promise. By the way, uh, my friend Wayne yeah. also put uh, Metal Tech uh, rock rails mm -hmm. on his 4Runner, so those are available. Um, he also put like a cargo system in the back. Uh, where you can put metal 
kind of like uh, shelves um, in the back um, of cool. the cargo area so you can hang stuff. So the other question I have for the foreigner guys out there is, uh, this is included with the Pro, yep. but if you want like a full length roof rack, yes. you know, for tents and for other accessories, if you're planning like off-road road trips, I'm not sure if this will get in the way. So if you want like a full Baja rack system, do you have to remove this? Is this removable or is this like an add-on you can do? Let us know in the comments below if you know. And also my friend Wayne found this out. He has a regular garage, yep. seven foot door. Right. And when he put a ski rack on this, uh -huh. it was quite tall. It wasn't quite fitting. Well, sure. So he had to actually mount his ski carrier lower. Right. So that's a neat thing as well. Yep. All right, Andre, should we get to some questions? Yep. What do we got going on in the comment slash email world? So Tom was asking via email, um, he's thinking about picking up a diesel Touareg, first-gen Touareg, Ooh. and came across your videos while researching them. I was wondering what size tires you put on the Touareg during your off-road test. Did you use a spacer kit, etc.? as I'm hoping to find that happy medium between an excellent on- and off-road car. Okay, pause. I'm going to go look at the car and tell you the exact size of the tire because I immediately <laughs> forgot what it was. Okay, Andre, I've got a question for you. Well, while he's running to see the Turek tires, which is actually just outside, uh, the V10, the TDI, the first gen, I think that's the question, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you have to be careful because that engine is very difficult to maintain or fix. So make sure you, know, you do your research, look at your history, and make sure that that V10 diesel Turek is top notch. Otherwise, you'll be spending thousands of dollars repairing that engine, uh, taking it out, changing parts. Uh, yes, tires. All right, do we have audio? I think we have audio with me again. <laughs> 26570 R17 is what we put on our Turek. However, if you get a V10 diesel, that's not going to work for you because you can't put the 17-inch wheels on the diesel Turag because the brakes are too big. So you have to go to a bigger wheel. Uh, frankly, I wouldn't get a diesel Turag. I think they're amazing, but they're also disasters in terms of maintenance and longevity. They're very powerful, but disastrous. Yeah, like yeah. 550 pound-feet of torque. Yeah. So if you're actually planning on using an off-road, get a V6 or a V8. Uh, with that 17-inch wheel, too, is a really good look. And that's about the 31, right? I mean, the 31 little, to... Yeah, it's like a 32-ish. Like a big 31? And okay. no, I didn't have to do any spacer on it because I've got the air suspension. Even in like the sport setting, which lowers it down, it's got plenty of clearance. But if you have like a, a steel suspension car, you may have to space it up a little bit. Okay. So Pat E just donated $2 through the live chat. Says, love your channel. Thank you. And Thanks, Andre Pat. the most. Oh. Really? Oh, that's kind of a diss. No, it's not a diss. You're very okay, lovable, thank you. Andre. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Jamal asked, asked a question for uh, me, since I'm our resident Forerunner fan. I Zach. Guess. Zach is behind the camera. How did that happen? <laughs> because, we have, because we have too many Jeep fans around here, somebody has to be an advocate for Toyota. Uh -huh. Toyota. Okay. There you go. Um, Jamal S. is asking, what's better in your opinion, Voodoo Blue or Army Green? I was oh. a strong advocate for Voodoo Blue last year. You know, as much as I love it, it's a little over the top. Uh, Should we vote? Three of us? Vote? Sure. There was one vote in the, in the chat um, from Neil Bird saying Voodoo Blue. What, what's your vote? Voodoo Blue. What's your vo vote? I was going to say Voodoo Blue, Yeah. but after having this and driving it around a little bit, I'm actually warming to the Army Green. So yeah, oh, I'll go with Army Green. I'm but, a tiebreaker. Uh, tiebreaker? It's got to be Army Green. It's actually, yeah. Oh, That's no. the best color in Forerunner World. I love the blue, though. Cool. Um, so if you want to be camouflaged in the forest, this is the way to do it. If you do not want to be camouflaged, Voodoo Blue. There you go. Um, Royal Finessen was asking any new info on the Chevy Colorado. So at the Chicago Auto Show, we were just there, right? right. Um, I was searching for the 2021 ZR2. Uh, it wasn't there. Literally actually. searching. Like he was <laughs> underneath tables yes. and like on chairs, like looking around. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't there, but it's only uh, a mild, mild update. Right. They, they're changing their grills. Uh, they're changing a couple of options, a couple of colors. So it's not an actual redesign or upgrade. Right. Um, and the other truck I was searching for was a 2021 GMC Canyon 84 which also wasn't there. Right, so... Uh, uh, also a mild uh, trim. Level. I also don't think the Escalade was there. No, I the Escalade wasn't there either. They had the Yukon, though, and I think a Tahoe or Suburban? Several Tahoes, several Suburbans. Several, okay. Several uh, Yukons, but all of the Escalades 2021s, I think, were in Hollywood yesterday. They are in Hollywood! <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. Oscar, it was Oscars. They were, right. Yeah. That's right. Here's a good question. Uh, 
Carlos Benitez is asking, should I buy a used Toyota FJ Cruiser or a used 4Runner? Ooh, what a question. So FJ Cruisers, they keep their value like no other, right? I mean, they're rare. Right. In Colorado, if you want a used FJ Cruiser, it's like 30 grand or more, it's right? It, it's a lot of money because they're kind of rare. People like them, but they're quirky, right? Uh, they have um, suicide doors, you know, little half doors in the back. Mm -hmm. um, so not a lot of visibility, not a lot of space. <sighs> what do you think? Mechanically, they're very similar. Yeah. So the, the V6 in both is very similar. Uh, you know, the front suspension design is pretty similar. Solid rear axle on both. It's just a matter of do you need, you have kids, do you need to use a, like the rear seat regularly? Yeah. Because it's a if pain. No, if yeah. no, FJ Cruiser. If yes, then definitely Foreigner. Because it's yeah. terrible to get to the rear seat in FJ Cruiser. Yeah. But at the same time, it looks cooler, it's more fun. And also, if you like a little bit that uniqueness factor, right. I think FJ, FJ Cruiser. FJ, FJ sure. Cruiser, for sure. So Dan Atkinson is pointing out Toyota has enough fans. Look at their sales. That's a fair point. Oh, thank you, I Dan. I'm a big Toyota fan. I love the Foreigner. <laughs> I just, I, I think it's a lot of money, especially in TRD Pro. The one to get that, that nobody talks about is the TRD Off-Road. Because yeah. you get 85% of what you get on a TRD Pro. Off-Road, it's really not going to be any better. But it's about eight grand less. Yeah, it's a lot of money less. Yes, that's a lot of money where you can spend on your own rack system, your own suspension system, right? You can your upgrade own wheels, your own you wheels. You don't get the TRD wheels. Right, right, right. 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 So, yeah, I kind of agree. TRD Off-Road is good. But you get the crawl system, you get A-Track, you get the rear locker. You still get a pretty decent suspension system. It's just not the crazy fox that you get on the TD Pro. Yeah. So we have a donation, um, three ninety nine from Efrain. Nick, Th thank you, Efrain. Yeah. Um, should Toyota bring the FJ back? So we were just asking views, but should they yes. bring it back? Yes. Yes, because the Bronco is coming back. Because if the Bronco and the Wrangler are here, or or not the FJ, maybe just redesign this. <laughs> That'd be a start. <laughs> Re redesign this and make it really awesome, um, retro styled. This. Yeah. Dave M was also asking, should you buy a Forerunner TRD Pro or wait for the new Bronco? So uh, another unofficial news just came out this morning. Okay. Uh, they said that the new 2021 Bronco will be likely in dealers uh, about a month, a year from now. So February. 2021. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. So if you can wait a year, 12 months, that's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> uh, we don't know much about the Bronco, first of all. Right. So in the meantime, this is what's available. I, I like, I take, people are always ask that about like the Cybertruck. Should and I wait or should I just not? Just get the one available now that's proven, right? I mean, the, the 400 has been around for a long time. It's very proven. Not saying the Bronco won't be, but I never particularly like to buy the first year of anything until they kind of work out all the kinks and the bugs. So I think you're several years out before I'd comfortably like buy a Bronco, yeah. right? Yeah, so in the meantime, you could be waiting for a very long time like me. I've been waiting for my new truck to buy yeah, for the last five years. Yeah, Andre's been buying a new truck for the last like eight years now. <laughs> you will be like me. Right. <laughs> yes, okay. David had uh, an email that he sent to us asking, um, are you planning on testing the 2020 Ford Super Duty with the 6.2 liter V8 and 10 speed auto? Um, put that through its paces in an empty and towing fuel economy run, maybe with a normal user weight rather than taking it to the max. Uh, so thought it might be interesting to see how it compares to GM's new 6.6 .6 gas engine. That's interesting. The 6.2 is still available in the 2020 Super Duty trucks, as you know. Uh, but the, it's kind of a rare combination of the 6.2 with a 10-speed. I believe it's only um, an F350, a very, very particular model. If I can get it, yes, but, but uh, they're hard to get. They're like special order trucks. So just, just to clarify for some folks in the comments, so on the F250, you get the 6.2 with the 6-speed. If you get the F350, you can get it with the 10-speed. Correct. There's a lot of choices for this offering. So the question was about the 10-speed with the F350. Okay. And if we can get it, yes, but it's really hard to get. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, speaking of, this is a good one from Anthony, speaking about um, old vehicles that need to be updated. What do you think GM will do with the Savannah and Express vans that have been around since probably before I was born? Oh, boy. Um, if you had to guess, what do you think they will do you know, moving forward? Do you think they'll drop them? Do you think they'll be updated? So, Tommy, van life is still huge, right? 
Hashtag Manly. Oh, I'm sorry. Hashtag. You came with the times, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm showing a little bit of my age. Ah. Um, so GM has had their express van and the, and the Savannah van it, since ever since I since I can remember, um, and they haven't updated, but they kept up their sales. Hmm. So it's mostly a fleet deal, right? Where right. where people who buy big you know fleets of trucks they can also get a Chevy van, like right? rental fleets. You see a lot of yeah like rental fleets, uh, U-Haul U-Haul fleets, you know stuff like that. So, so I don't know why I, they haven't. I've tried to asking them f to test one of them. Right. They basically said it's not available for testing. Basically, <laughs> I don't think they want us to test it because it's not. It's not new. It's not new. It's not new, and it's not being updated. They did have a diesel engine, so that they put a two point eight liter Duramax into those vans. Is it still the six liter, or is it the six six now? Do you know? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know. Ooh, I, I can smell a video coming up. Ooh. I don't know no, if I can, Andre. <laughs> no, no, because because the six liter is discontinued. Right. What are they gonna do? Well, you I just blew my, it out. You just blew my mind. That van has been around for like eight or nine presidencies at this point. <laughs> I just keep carrying it out. So I think you're the only something. person in human history whose mind has been blown <laughs> By regarding a GMC Savannah or a Chevy Express. <laughs> mind blown. Thank you. Is that hashtag mind blown? Well, yeah. let's put it, it, to put it friendly, it's a proven van. Yes. It's also rear wheel drive. And it only rear wheel drive. Yes. Too. So yeah. no more all wheel drive option available. And it's kind of a tried and true truck chassis. Um, getting back to the Forerunner for a second, Z Diver One was asking, "What's the ground clearance on the uh, TRD Pro Forerunner compared to the off-road um, per Toyota?" It's still 9.6 inches. Right. It's so very it's almost no the, improvement. Yeah, the TRD Pro has slightly beefier tires, so yeah. you might get a little bit more, but not much. Isn't there like a slight increase in the front? I thought they kind of leveled it out, just or am I dreaming? I don't think so. I think it's pretty much the okay. same. Okay. Okay. Uh, but. I mean, you get the underbody protection, which is awesome. You get the cool wheels and tires, which is cool, but it's somewhat visual. You get the roof rack, which is visual. Some, you get the yeah, Fox somewhat. shocks, which are... Not I, visual, I, not but visual, but yeah. good. But they are an upgrade over the KDSS suspension that you can get on the TRD oh, offer. My mic just turned off. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, I think uh, we're kind of losing uh, Tommy's microphone, so I apologize for that. Um, uh, okay. more, more questions? Well, yeah, I've got questions for you. Um, sure. Do you, would, uh, Christian Ortega is asking, get a full-size truck for overlanding or get something like a 4Runner? I would get something like a 4Runner. It's nice to have something in a manageable size. Half-ton so, trucks are a little too big, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. I, I always think about turning radius when kind of the question like, like that comes up. So if you're on a tight trail and you're traversing this serpentine road on a mountain or something like that, and if you're in a very long wheelbase truck, and you're making a five-point turn, then it's kind of a big problem. Um, something like this would make a turn better, although this is also um, kind of an older, you know, steering system. So um, I would say get this, but we're going to be doing a lot of overlanding in big trucks this year. Big trucks. Uh, F-250, <laughs> uh, Chevy Silverado 1500 Trail Boss. Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Which is now a big um, truck. Because we're kind of truck guys and we like you know, learning more about trucks, and that's why we're doing it. So. The other thing to keep in mind is fuel economy. Uh, the good news is, is is they have huge tanks, you know, like upwards the, of 30, The bigger trucks, yes. Yeah, 36-gallon yes. tanks. The bad news is they they suck a lot of fuel. But this is not great on fuel either. No, it isn't. This yeah. is not very good on so fuel. So a forerunner is also challenged on fuel economy. Right. I've been driving it all weekend. I'm struggling to crack 14. Okay. Which is pretty terrible. Uh, which is, I've been driving the F-250 7.3 Godzilla V8, struggling to break 14. And I've so. been driving the Turag, also struggling to break 14. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in that same boat, I think. <laughs> so I think as, li as long as 14 MPG is your At limit. At this point, with the recent departure of Baja Bob, are all the TFL fleet vehicles now V8s? Pretty much. Uh, well, the Gladiator is not. Well, the Gladi uh, yeah, you're right. The Gladiator is not. I wish it was a V8. Is, the Trail Boss is. Right. The LR3 is. Yes. ML isn't. That's a V6. Ah, there we oh, go. We, okay, we're, we're keeping the balance a little bit. Look, we um, got some donations. We did. We got $10 from Eric Johnson. Eric Thanks, Johnson. Eric. Thank, nice thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Pat E donated another five. Thank you as um, well. Asking thank you, Pat. Tommy, do you still have your Wrangler JK and any new plans for it? 
No, so we sold the JK a long while back, actually, for the JL. Yes, the two-liter. Yeah, the two-liter, which then we got rid of for the, the Gladiator. But actually, it was, it was funny. The, um, the person who bought the JK was uh, a rather height challenge kind of elderly lady. Yes. She was the nicest person in the... She was so nice. And she's like, this is my dream Jeep. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know how she got in the Jeep on um, like 35. But so she, she raced away. Like, she drove me. away fast. Yeah, she raced <laughs> away. Yeah, six-speed manual. She <laughs> loves it. So she's in Golden, Colorado. Yeah. I have to get in touch with her make sure it's treating her well because it, uh, it was a great thing. Yeah. Christian Ortega donated another $2 saying, Christian, please, thank you. I'll pay for another Forerunner versus Wrangler comparison. <laughs> if we oh. can get both again at the same time, they haven't quite lined up. We had the Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel recently. That was a few weeks ago. Now we have this. We were trying to line them up, but we couldn't to, to get it yeah, done. Yeah, sometime yes. during the summer, hopefully, we're, we can... The issue is, like frankly, that. is that the Forerunner hasn't changed in so long that the results are going to be pretty much the same yeah. as... Uh, you know, our last comparison with the two-liter Wrangler. Right? And, the, and the Wrangler hasn't changed much in the last couple, couple of years, years, other than the diesel. The so diesel's the cool. The diesel is new. The diesel's yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, you remember, so there was a company, uh, they, they, the guy came down with his Tacoma. Yes. His diesel swap Tacoma. Oh, yeah, from Texas. I, I'd love to see someone do that to a uh, Fitz and Foreigner. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, I think it was DieselToys.com is the company that actually converts. Right. Uh, we're not sponsored by them, we're just... No, but... but uh, they're, they're the ones that did the Tacoma. And actually, the funny thing is, is so the, these were, the, the, the Tacoma and the Foreigner had the same powertrain for a long time. Then, then Tacoma went brand new, um, but Foreigner is still sticking with the 4-liter. Yes. And just about every journalist I talk to says the 4-liter is better than the 3.5. Well, I think, and I think where that's coming from is also the new 6-speed had kind of pro programming issues a little right. bit right. in some Tacomas. And this is a uh, five-speed, so also different transmissions. Yeah, different transmissions. Yeah, too. and this has a lot of torque, actually. A, it does. A lot, a lot more of torque. than the 3.5. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And actually, when we raced the three generations of Tacoma, the four-liter, the 3.5, and the Nathan's ancient... 3.3 or something? 3.4, I want to say. Uh -huh. uh, the four-liter was, the, was, was yeah, it the was. same as it was. Nathan's, but I think it was the quickest, right? It was the quickest because it was also a little bit lighter. Right, and yeah. the, the new 3.5 was way slower than both generations. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. Ted P donated $2. Ted, thank um, you. Just for some context here, has a profile picture of an H1 Hummer, and he says, donating to Andres, get a real Hummer. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, it's probably still one of my dreams. I'm going to keep my H2 for a while. I like Tad, actually. If you're watching, I like you a lot. You do some funny comments on our stuff. Um, so <laughs> keep, keep up the good work yeah. there. Uh, th so but but H I also want the new electric Hummer. Yeah, Andre thinks that the electric Hummer is going to increase the value of the H2. Yes. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think that will actually happen? Like, I'm really curious if it will. But the H2, right, gets a reputation of being a rebody Tahoe. But yes. there's a lot of changes. It, it's quite different. Everybody says it's a Tahoe, but right. it's got different hubs. Uh, different. The floor pan is shared, as far as I know, some of the floor uh, pan, but the body is obviously different. The suspension is a bit different. And the frame is different. So what they did on yeah. the H2 is they actually, if you look at from the front to the rear, they tuck the frame super high into the body. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot more ground clearance than the Tahoe. And it also weighs as much as a planet. So right, that the, has the, the common with yeah. the H1. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yes. All right, a um, couple more questions. So Bodie Beard just asked question on the forerunner he says i like the trd pro but i like the off-road premium without the kdss and he's thinking about doing aftermarket suspension do we have any thoughts also is a supercharger worth it for the forerunner mm. i think build your own pro is a good decision like buy yeah. an off-road mm -hmm. and build it up yourself yeah i agree um supercharging i haven't had a lot of experience with supercharging these these guys i don't know if i would do it because it'll it'll definitely void your warranty <laughs> and it will decrease its reliability probably yeah i mean these engines are so bulletproof and, and frankly like it's never going to be that quick especially with a five-speed automatic yeah if yeah. you want to go to the drag strip this, this is, is not, not the, this is not, not the truck for you although do you remember in the tundra Toyota did a supercharged yeah. factory, factory TRD option. Yes. That was warrantied as well. And also they did a factory Tacoma 3.3 or 3.4 liter supercharger. I also uh, tested one of the guy, you know, one of the local uh, guys who watch our show brought brought one in, which was incredible. But they don't do any factory TRD superchargers anymore. Right. So there was a question earlier um, from Royal Finessen who was saying 
will TFL miss the V8 in the Tundra if it goes away in the redesign? And it's probably, at least according it's, to rumors, likely that it will. The rumors say it's likely going to go away, the V8, the 5.7. Right. Will I miss it? I will. If thinking to the day where I drove the supercharged V8 Tundra, right. <laughs> heck yeah, I'll miss it. But will I miss the fuel economy? Probably not. I mean, what the, the best thing about that engine is, and I, so I was talking to, um, what was name? God, sorry, Kurt Williams from Cruiser Outfitters. Okay. And he, he actually did a, he took a 5.7 liter 200 series Land Cruiser to Baja. Uh -huh. And he said after one of the days, they opened up the airbox and they pulled like two pounds of sand out of the airbox. Like okay. the engine was just breathing sand and it was 100% fine. You know, like it, they could still, not kill that that five still, seven. Still powerful yeah. and still, and our two thousand eight Land Cruiser also had that same engine. Yeah, they're bulletproof, right? And That's what I'm gonna miss. Yeah, one hundred fifty seven thousand miles on ours. Right, and it felt brand new. It felt new. Although, uh, so we've got a, a local guy named um, Charlie who runs Charlie's Toyota Repair in Boulder. Awesome guy. He's been doing it forever and really talented. So he's worked on every engine that Toyota's made many many times over. He says the best engine he's ever worked on is the engine in the old Land Cruiser. So that's the 4.7 with a timing belt. Mm. He said those... Timing belt? Timing belt, yeah. Really? He said that those will just run and run and run forever. And it's supposed to be an interference engine. So when the belt snaps, the, you're supposed to detonate the engine. Oopsie. But he said he's had guys like drive them in with the belt snapped. And it was still Yeah, yeah, like, like he'll start it. It won't run well, obviously, or at all. But like the engine won't, won't actually grenade itself. So yeah. really good engine. So plenty of people are saying in the comments, no, the 5.7 V8 can't go, unfortunately, due to fuel economy and but, tightening emissions requirements. I mean, it's going to happen, guys. But guys, 2021 Tundra we saw in Chicago, we have a video about that, um, is go going on sale in September of this year, and it's going to be the same truck with the same V8. So we still have about two years of that engine, maybe almost two years. So... If you miss that engine, well, you can buy it. You can still buy it. Okay. Um, one quick question, then we'll end on a donation from uh, Efrain. I'll get back to that in a second. Thanks. Um, the question from Paul XT 1200Z: What's the second knob on crawl control for? So in the Forerunner, you have two Should knobs we... in the overhead console. Yeah, you can show it. Let's 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 take a look. Do we have the light, Andre? You have the light. The oh, table. I have it. Okay. So, yeah, so there's actually a couple different knobs on these uh, new Forerunners up top. So, uh, let's see, let's start up here. These are the buttons. That's the rear diff lock. That's A-Track, which is kind of like off-road um, traction control. That works really well, no one talks about it ever. Um, this is your speed, so this will adjust your crawl control. So that'll be like, you know, slow, medium, fast. Like, like one, one to five miles an hour, approximately, Yeah, right? off-road cruise control. And then this is called MTS, or multi-saline terrain. Multi-terrain. <laughs> multi-terrain multi select, select. yeah. Yes. And that's different modes, like sand mode, right? Right, rock yeah, mode. Yeah, rock, mogul. Yeah. So if you're driving by a cactus, you use that one. If you're driving <laughs> through licorice, you use that one. If you're driving over some bean bags, you use that one. Um, and then if your car is being tipped over by gumballs, you need that one. Uh, but but that yeah, that will adjust it for your uh, your need off road. Gumballs, really? Well, or meatballs. Oh, okay. <laughs> meatballs. So Toyota has the meatball uh, driving technology. So that's that's really special. And I sort of saw someone in the comments section below. Speaking of Tundra, Andre, yes. we're talking about the 2021 Tundra which we just saw, and it's the same truck. I mean, there's a trail edition and some dark editions and too. And nightshade edition. Nightshade, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the same truck, and they're, they have something cooking. You right, know, they we said asked, they have something cooking. They're cooking something. And before we get to kind of like last couple questions, uh, going back to the V8 thing, right? L like, let's think about this rationally, right? If you're a manufacturer, you just have to share engines between um, vehicles. Multiple vehicles, yes. Exactly, and you see that in GM, like the 5.3 is used in the Yukon, uh, it's used Tahoe, in Tahoe, the Silverado, Silverado it's, Sierra. It's used in everything, right? So Toyota would have to use that V8 in other products. So the 5.7 is currently used in the current Tundra and the current Land Cruiser. And Lexus LX. And the Lexus LX, exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, if they were going to come out with a new V8 for the new Tundra, I think we would have seen it by now in other Toyota Lexus products. Or overseas, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. And we, we really haven't. So they've got the 4.6 in the Lexus GX, which is ancient. Yes. Really, really ancient. Well, don't they have the five liter in the in the Roadster? Yeah, and like but, the but, but that's a sports car engine. Yeah, so that's their I think their newest engine architecture in the V eight is the five liter of like a GSF. Uh -huh. Right. 
But that's not a truck engine. Like that's a really high strung sports high, car. High engine. revving. Yes. And and the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, fuel economy standards are tightening, emission standards are tightening, and V8s are just there's a lot of fuel and a lot of stuff that comes out of those big combustion chambers. So I yeah. think it's a thing of the past. I don't think we're going to see it in the new Tundra. Well, Ford started this trend in 2011. They introduced the V6 EcoBoost. Right. right? And everyone freaked about out about it. Yeah. And now it's the most popular engine of them all. Right. It's in also the, in the fastest. Yes. Right. Um, well, not the most efficient. No, I mean, not it's the still, most efficient. But still very powerful, very fast. Toes well. Yes. Yeah, and they killed the diesel. Didn't they just... No, well, so, no, F it's still available. So there was a little glitch on their website, actually. Oh, it I, was. I called Ford. I said, we're having trouble configuring the diesel 3-liter okay. F-150. And they said, no, 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 it's still available. Uh, you know, there's, you know, nothing to see here. But I was like, but I can't find it. And they're like, it was a glitch oh, on okay. their website. So, Interesting. So, but, but EPA still has to approve every single year. The government still has to approve that engine. Right. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so speaking of diesels, we'll close the show on this because we're okay. going over time. Um, from Efrain, donated two dollars. So thank, thank you, Efrain. Um, will you guys do vehicle uh, videos? Rather, I'm sorry, on the new Ram Rebel 1500 diesel. <laughs> yes. Yes, we will very yes. soon. In fact. Yes, it's coming very soon. I think next week. Isn't that right? Yeah. So um, we get usually trucks for about a week. Right. Like this Forerunner mm -hmm. from the press fleets. We're getting a Rebel diesel. I'm very excited. We're going to compare it against the GMC Sierra 1500 AT4 diesel. Oh, cool. So it's going to be They're a half... Same, both at the same time? Yeah, half-ton oh, diesel sweet. comparison, which is really rare to get multiple trucks like this. That's awesome. Um, and also Stephen, our Canadian bureau chief up, <laughs> up, up north. It's he not also, formal, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's also getting a Rebel diesel. So you same will time. almost at the same time. Wow. So you will see so much Rebel Diesel content. You will you won't even know what to do with it. Yeah, you'll be done with Rebel <laughs> Diesel. You'll never want to see another one ever. Is it a Rebel too? Yes. Oh my goodness. What a day, guys. So stay tuned for yeah. that. And on that note. <laughs> and on that note, thank you for watching. Yes. Uh, this is a 2020 TRD Forerunner. Yes. Thanks Toyota for letting us use their truck for this week. And yes. head over to tfltruck.com, tflcar.com. Yep, tflclassics, not .com, oh. just the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, also, by the way, uh, on Fridays, at the same time, we do truck show. Right. And w whenever we can get Mr. Truck, he's going to be here. Awesome. Yes. Well, we'll see. Thank you.